Um, talking uh, now about the um, transformative power of emotion focused therapy. So, well, the, I mentioned um, previously that um, it is a process experiential model. So it's a process model in terms of that we, um, um, that life is a process, that we are processing and reprocessing our experiences and our emotions, and that in processing and reprocessing, um, actually brings um, health and healing. Um, it's also um, an experiential model. Now that doesn't mean that um, it has experiential processes in it, which it does. So there are three three levels of exp of, of the word um, experiencing and or experience. Um, so one of them is we, when we teach, we use experiential processes. So experiential processes are the art, um, the chair work, the um, cushion work, uh, the um, active, um, uh, the active processing work, and even the group work. That's all experiential teaching, which we do. Uh, now, in the sessions, in the actual emotion sessions, we also, um, in the, the counselling, we actually use um, experiential work. So, we, again, we use cushion work, we use um, um, artwork and so forth. So, but that's not the meaning of experiential, uh, an experiential model or an experiential therapy. What an experiential therapy means is that um, the, it's in its um, at, at its core is the belief that ex inner our own inner experience is um, the um, is the I was going to say the root of, but um, I think um, it's it's the the place from which. Um, healing and change occur. So it's a place from which transformation occurs. So, so there has to be um, um, a, an ability to access our inner experiences. Our inner experiences aren't necessarily emotional, although emotion um, can be connected to our inner experience. But it's, it's really, you know, asking ourselves, so if we just checked in with ourselves right this minute, what would what would be the inner experience, what's happening inside is a good way to describe or to, to try and get to what the inner experience is. So if we're just sitting, you know, and we're, we're sort of comfortable or we might be having dinner and we're feeling very comfortable um, and we say, so we check in and see what's happening inside, it isn't necessarily an emotion that's happening inside. So it, um, it can be... Um, it, it can be, it, it's a feeling of some sort or a sensing of some sort, um, but it also can be emotional. So the basis of the work is to um, access inner experiencing and um, the focusing work does that beautifully um, and a lot of the active expression tasks um, that we do in EFT um, help the client to actually um, get to that inner experiencing, but um, you know that um, takes some time, and so that's part of what you need to be able to do really well for yourself is to be able to access your inner experience. Um, you know what's going on inside for you, and of course, if you have a mindfulness practice, you'll be um, really experienced at doing that. So mindfulness practices do help um, in terms of accessing inner experience so so the so this therapy was called it uh, wasn't called emotion focused therapy originally it was a called process experiential therapy um, because it was about um, this accessing of the inner experience and reprocessing it so um, uh, later on, um, it, the, the name was changed to Emotion Focus Therapy. It was, um, I guess, a clearer description, perhaps, of, um, of, of the actual therapy. But, um, 
but um, you know we don't want to lose we don't want to lose the underlying um, idea or underlying philosophy of this therapy, which is that um, experience experience is central. It's 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 the core of who we are as human beings. So um, um, we've got here um, process and experiencing together. Situations are experienced or re-experienced or reinterpreted in their newness. And that's a, uh, a goal of emotion-focused therapy. So um, that's where we start in terms of the underlying philosophy. Um, which is um, very similar to the Rogerian philosophy as well. So personal transformation occurs as a person changes their manner of experiencing. So from a remoteness and fixity of experience at one end of the continuum to an immediacy of experience at the other end. So um, making new meanings as well. So. And I've seen this in in um, in Michelle's book that um, that the importance is that um, we move as human beings we move to um, an immediacy of experience so we we access this immediate felt inner experience the immediate felt inner um, sense of what's going on right now inside. And then we, um, so we, we access it, we um, experience it, we express it, we process it, and we make meaning of it. So that these are the steps that we actually take. We make meaning. Um, and so that's very different um, way of being in the world than, um, than having a remoteness or a fixity of experience. This is how I experience things and I'm not going to let myself or anybody else um, 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 know that anything's different to that. So it's almost like um, if a person um, is, um, has a fixity of experience, it means that they won't allow themselves to to it to um, uh, uh, communicate with their experience or or have access to their experience. So so it's like no, this is how I experience things. This is how it should be. It's um, um, uh, they um, have very strong value systems, and the value systems are value systems connected to society, rather than uh, value systems that um, are connected to an inner self or a real self so um so um they obviously we all have inner experience and our inner experience changes in the moment um and that's um <clears throat> the constructivist view um philosophically uh so uh, but the thing is that if we have um a, um, a fixity of ex of experience we don't allow ourselves to actually access um, our true inner experience. And so therefore we don't really realize we've got one. So, um, so, transformation, so transformation occurs as we help the client move along this continuum. And that's what we're doing in our work. <clears throat> um, they come in often, um, uh, you know, very remote from their experience or they come in um, believing that the experience is such and such or or they have a certain type of experience and um, and so um, they transform as that shifts no oh, pardon me so uh, so the, the transformation happens at a personality level it happens at um, a level of the self it happens at um, it happens in terms of their pers um, perspective. So we get perspective change, um, which is um, um, part, of, part of the definition of transformation is that there will be perspective change. 
and there's also um, change in relationships or in the way of relating. So people um, relate to others differently and others relate back differently and so they have a different experience of relationship. So this is truly transformative. If we keep our eye on this continuum and track it as, um, as we, we, you know, formulating um, our, um, or, or assessing where our client's up to, um, we, we, we do see uh, these uh, changes. So if we are not seeing change, if we're not seeing transformation, then what's happening is that uh, somebody's not moving on this continuum. So we'll talk about that more as we uh, go, through the, go through the degree. Um, so reorganisation of emotion schemes um, takes place, and I, I've read this also in, um, in Michelle's book, that um, we get a reorganisation of the emotion scheme, the reorganisation of um, what Michelle calls the emotional signatures, and, and of course, there's, a, there's a, a, um, a change in meaning, in personal meaning, that accompanies that. Um, and what happens is that there's a, real, a reorganization of the self. So we'll talk about, and you probably have already in your course talked about the self and, um, and what constitutes the self and, um, and how um, transformation um, 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 results as somebody reorganizes their, themselves or their self schemes, um, we might call them self schemes, um, and so forth. So um, people, so people do radically change. So we notice that as they're changing along that continuum, they're also reorganizing their self. And um, this comes from Rogerian thinking. Um, Rogers talked about a, a self. Um, which was a um, self-actualizing self. We could call it a self-authoring self. Um, the EFT founders call it a um, an experiencing self, which is really lovely because um, you know it's a self that really experiences and understands that it experiences and relishes in the experience and can stay with the experience and so forth. And so that self is a very different self to the socially constructed self. The socially constructed self is the self that is still really looking for approval from society, from mum and dad, um, teachers and so forth. So it looks for approval and, um, and so will do um, whatever it takes to actually fit in with society and to, to, um, um, uh, to um, receive uh, acceptance. So the, t um, the two aren't mutually um, exclusive. We need to know how to work in society, how to live in society, how to be good citizens. We certainly need to do that, but not at the cost of um, our um, abandoning ourself. And so, um, so, so this is something that we're going to be looking at also. You know, pretty much every workshop we will need to look at this um, and how this works. So, um, um, so I was saying I was mentioning before one of my favourite authors, um, Keith Tudor, um, and um, his. Uh, so, so when he paired with um, um, Mike Worrell um, for his for their 2014 text, um, these are the seven stages which they talked about, and I think this fits beautifully with um, the EFT work. Um, in fact, uh, you know, this, this is um, uh, transport. It's a, these are the stages of transformation. So we get the first stage, which is the fixity and remoteness of experience, which we talked about a few minutes ago. And then we've got um, the next stage, which is experiencing is bound by the structures of the past. And that um, we have to uh, understand something about um, the socially constructed self and um, um, understand how that actually works. Um, so what we have to do is we have to, to unlock um, the real self and, um, um, and let go of some of those past structures.
I let go of all of them really. But then, you know, if we choose to use one of them, we use it, but we use it with consciousness. And I think that that's different because that gives us personal power. So stage three is um, expressing self-related experiences, objects. So externalizing uh, experience. So, um, so, um, and that's, you know, you hear, very simple example of that is where you hear people say, um, well, when that happens, you feel something or other. When that happens, you always feel um, you always feel angry or you always feel something, the you being, not the who they're talking to, but you as in all other people outside in the world. Um, so, um, so there are a lot of examples of that, but um, it's not being able to own self-experience um, and um, we can't own it for a lot of different reasons um, uh, embedded in, in childhood really, um, including shame, including um, um, we won't uh, fear of not um, being accepted um, and so forth. So um, we, we work on that. Um, we need to work on that um, in the process. So then stage four, we get to experiences less remote, but it's more likely to occur with delay. So what that means is that um, the person doesn't have access to immediate felt experience but they do after perhaps some artwork, after some discussion, um, after some reflection, after some journaling. They do have access to it, but it's not immediate and it's not felt. But very excited when they actually, you know, do some artwork and they actually um, are able to access um, that uh, understanding and, and experience. So, um, so then we get to experience is loose, it's not remote and it occurs with little delay. So there might be a bit of a delay, but it's like, you know, those aha moments come more quickly. There's a real sense of, you know, what's there right now and, um, and uh, what comes from that. So in accessing what's there right now, they might then have images of experiencing that come um and um and they then they you know from there they might have um they might be able to access their past um, um much more quickly so stage six is the immediacy of the, of the experiencing is accepted so they are able to access it immediately um and they uh, they are able to access it uh they're able to um express it experience it and um and they feel comfortable about doing that. That's just part of life. That's what happens in life. Have this immediate experience. You might just sit with it, you know, for, for a few moments. You feel it. You get get the drift of it. You um, you might express it if you if somebody if something's there. You might write something down. Um, but um, but you're not um, sh ashamed of it or threatened by it or. Um, um, you try and deny it or project it onto someone else. Um, you're just um, really happy to just be um, be with it and, um, and 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 accept it. And then at stage seven, experience is fluid and it, and experiences are accepted in full awareness interpreted and communicated in their newness. So um, experiences change you know, within the moment. So if we, um, if we can access our inner experience, we just notice that it can then, it then changes. And then we're with the new experience and it changes. So that's the constructivist idea of, um, of inner experience, that once we touch it, it, it by its very nature changes. And so, um, so full awareness is full awareness of that process happening inside. And there's not just some sort of acceptance, there's some sort of um, uh, um, joy in that process. So, <clears throat> and also um, it's, you know, when somebody says, oh, wow, I've just had this experience or, oh, wow, I just want to tell you about this great thing. And that's about communicating in their newness. It comes with some surprise um, and, um, and, and there's kind of a fullness of experience. And so that's um, a stage seven um, experience. So you can just imagine how much um, a person 
um, lives a very different life when they're in when they live from stage one, stage two, stage three. Um, <clears throat> if they're living at that that stage, you can imagine um, a very very different life to if they're living at um, stage six and stage seven. So of course um, there is going to be um, there is transformation um, in their entire life um, as they move through these stages. <clears throat> so there's also in transformation in EFT, there's a, um, <clears throat> there's a movement um, um, from, well, um, <clears throat> sorry, I've got it around the wrong way there, from personal incongruence to personal congruence. So, um, but incongruence just means, and a lot of people don't know what this means, but it means that there's a discrepancy between the self um, as we perceive the self and, um, and self-experiencing. Um, Carl Rogers called it organismic experiencing. But what that means is um, I perceive myself a certain way so I might perceive myself as um, <clears throat> a very kind person, um, or, or let's say I, a uh, better example might be, I perceive myself as a very charismatic person. But <clears throat> my organismic experiencing is really when I check in with myself, I'm um, not so um, charismatic. I'm much I'm more calm, I'm much more introverted, and I'm um, much more careful. But I really see myself as charismatic. And I, you know, and I, that's how I identify myself, that's how I see myself, um, but that's not who I am at the core. That's, uh, that's who I've become. And not that it's a bad thing, not at all. So I haven't become someone bad, but I've become someone who perhaps um, has become that because uh, that was what mum and dad liked. They liked extroverts or I had to be an extrovert if I wanted to get attention um, more than my brother or I had to be an extrovert because I had 30 or 40 people in my class at school. So I had to do something to get the attention that I needed. And, and I did it and practiced it and practiced it until it became part of me even. So, um, and um, I think the, the, the Gestaltists talk about this too um, as, um, uh, as a creative adjustment. And they say that the child, the, the young adult, um, makes this creative adjustment and um, to, um, to become something, to become this certain personality, these certain traits, but they're very, very different to the deep, um, true self of the person. And so, um, so this creates um, what um, Rogers and um, uh, what um, the EFT, the underlying philosophy, um, calls incongruence, personal incongruence. And so um, a lot of the, uh, the, the uh, chapters and the readings and the uh, literature that's been written on this incongruence um, in, in terms of therapy or therapists tells us that we have to manage our own personal incongruence first as therapists. And so if we can't manage our own personal incongruence, then what sort of state is going to be in the room and how open then can the client be to actually um, becoming themselves, their true self. Um, so that's something that we need to look at also in our in our course and and um, in our development through the graduate certificate and through the graduate diploma. So um, <clears throat> so EFT offers this movement towards internal congruence. So and when 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 we're when when we're moving towards congruence, um, that's when we're in touch with our experiencing. So in order to get in touch with our experiencing, in order to have access to the um, inner experiencing that we were talking about in that in those final steps, um, a person um, by by the very nature of working towards that stage. 
um, we're also work working towards congruence. So you can't actually um, access inner experience um, and be with it and sit with it and accept it um, if you are not congruent. So you actually have to be, it, 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 it demands an inner, inner congruence. Otherwise, what happens is, um, and you'll see this happening with clients, is that they have the experience and they push away from it because it's not consistent with their, um, you know, with, with what they know of themselves. Um, and that, you know, and that can be, that can manifest, you know, that they, um, you know, they think that they're bad um, and they think that they're weak and, and so forth. And so when, when their inner experience is showing them something different to that, you know, we're, we're there rejoicing as, as the, the counsellor or the therapist and yet they can't accept that because that's not... Um, who they believe themselves to be, so it, it, um, it it's a, you know naturally an incongruent state to be able to hold both of those. So um, so so we so you know what we're what we're also doing is we're we're encouraging um, in the processes that we use in EFT. It actually encourages um, the um, person to become or move towards inner congruence rather than incongruence. Uh, incongruence. So somebody asked me at the EFT um, uh, when I gave this lecture um, last time, somebody asked me what um, created psychopathology in uh, clients and um, in, in this model. And certainly um, this model talks about uh, uh, internal incongruence as creating psychopathology pathology particularly um, particularly anxiety so um, so this movement towards internal congruence towards the self towards um, you know towards um, really you know in a, you know uh, accessing inner experience um, changes in the self schemes um, these movements are movements towards um, internal congruence so, um, so no wonder that um, people uh, change, um, deeply change and deeply transform as we do this work. So I've put a few words there uh, which define um, self. If we talk about the word self, um, it's, um, it's authentic, um, it's experiencing, it's true. It's self-authoring, it's a self-authoring self, so it also has um, a lot of personal power and agency um, behind it, and it's also actualizing, so it's freeing up that, um, that's, that self that has potentiality, the self that can grow and um, be the best that it can be. So, um, so those are some of the words that are actually used, and, and we will need to study this um, carefully, I think, um, looking at... Um, you know the uh, authentic self. What is the authentic self? Is this is this um, uh, you know um, part of the work um, um, developing the authentic self <clears throat> of the client? And in what state does the client come to this little bit of the work? Do they come in in an authentic experiencing um, um, self, or do they come? within the socially constructed self. <clears throat> so, um, um, so communication, um, sorry, transformation um, in, communi in the, the way we communicate ourselves, um, it, um, there's a movement from an inability to truly communicate who we are in, the, in our genuineness and in our realness. Um, so there, 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 there isn't that capacity. Um, and the, the reason that there isn't that capacity is they don't know. Um, people don't know who they really are. So it's hard to communicate in genuineness and in realness. People are doing the very best that they can. They really are. Um, but... Um, it's just hard because um, the communication is the communication of the um, of the socially constructed self, of the self that I think that I need to be and I've learned that I need to be 
in order to um, get, um, you know, um, the most acceptance. So, so we can really understand that that's, um, you know, quite a strong goal. It's a very strong goal for people. Um, and so people say, why are you always wanting to talk about how you feel? I can't see the point of talking about it. Have you heard that um, in couple work? Um, we hear that quite a, quite a lot where one says, oh, I just want to really, um, you know, I want, to, I, want, I want us to talk about how we feel. I want you to talk about how you feel. You never talk about that. Um, and the other one says, I can't see the point of talking about that. So, um, so there's a lot in, in that statement alone, a lot in, um, um, in being not able to com communicate um, in, in realness and not able to, to tell you and can't even access um, how they feel, let alone start talking about it. Um, and sometimes we push clients, especially in couple work, we push them way too soon. Um, we push one or other party to actually talk about how they feel. Or maybe you can talk about it right now in, in this room in front of so-and-so. And, -so. and, um, and that um, doesn't work because they, they just haven't got to that yet. They're just not at that point. Um, <clears throat> so from um, an ability and willingness to openly communicate a changing awareness of internal experiencing along with taking ownership of the internal experiencing. So, um, so they might say something like, the sadness really swept over me in that moment and I realised that my mother would look tenderly at me, would look tenderly at me like that. Somehow I think that I bring her into my life quite a lot. So, so the person started, um, the, 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 they've accessed their inner experience of sadness. Um, they, you know, it's, it's, they know that it's just um, swept over them and um, they realise that, that that's linked to their mother, it's linked to the past in some way. And, um, and then they realise, they make meaning out of that by saying, wow, you know, I bring her into my life quite a lot. I didn't realise I did that. So, um, so there's quite a lot of movement in that, um, in that one sentence. And, um, and we can see where um, they're taking ownership of the internal experience um, and they're communicating a changing awareness of that um, internal experience. So uh, transformation of consciousness, <clears throat> um, this is um, probably um, much more philosophical, um, a philosophical base, but um, there are a number of consciousness theorists uh, in, in the world. And um, my, one of my favourites is Robert Keegan. Um, there's certainly um, Wilbur, Ken Wilbur, some of you might know him. Um, and um, Perry. Um, Perry was a theorist back in the 1960s. And then we've got people like um, uh, Belenke who looked at um, women's ways of knowing, so um, looked at women's um, development of consciousness. So there have been quite, quite a few of these, of these guys. <clears throat> and um, so what they say is that um, we don't just stop uh, developing um, when we're, uh, you know, when we're, when we're young, when we're a teenager, we actually continue to develop, but we continue, and there are many, many stages of adult development, whereas um, Eric Erickson maybe um, looked at um, one or two stages, but um, these guys look at um, quite a lot of stages um, of adult development. And so <clears throat> we can look at these stages and we can say that the um, that if we if we um, pe people are uh, on this trajectory um, of development of, of adult consciousness, uh, these um, um, there are quite a it's quite a process. So um, Keegan um, talks about um, stages of consciousness. He talks also so talks about um, order of knowing. And so um, what he says is that um, at each stage of adult development, 
um, the um, what what we understand is more complex uh, more complex than in the stage below uh, before it. So, so some people will say, well, it doesn't quite work like that because it's more you know it doesn't work like steps um, in a linear fashion. It works more like uh, you know a, a kind of circular. Uh, in a sort of a circular fashion, um, and um, and we can move backwards and forwards um, through those stages. Um, certainly, Keegan says that we can move backwards and forwards, and we do move backwards and forwards. But what um, what we now know, we can't not know. So if we go back a stage, we go back a stage with the knowledge of the new stage that we've lived in and that we've experienced. So the new stages look very similar to the stages also that, um, that we were talking about before that um, um, uh, Tudor and Worrell um, talk about. So, so the, the um, more, more um, complex the stage of um, consciousness that one person is, um, is in, and, and I, I call it negotiating, working through, um, then um, they have much more access to um, their own inner experience. They have much more access to empathy. They have um, much more, um, they're, they're, they're much less um, in, enmeshed and um, embedded in their own value system. So they're um, able to separate themselves from an experience or from a value system and they're able to look at it much more critically um, than they were in the stage before. So, so the, um, as we negotiate each of these stages of consciousness, life becomes less complex. Um, and we know that people in early stages of adult, um, adult development um, or even adults in adolescent development um, find the world incredibly complex find relationships impossible to manage, um, but just find um, the live day-to-day -day living and just understanding what's going on and trying to interpret the world, trying to interpret, you know, behaviours, um, uh, they, they find it um, almost impossible. So um, it leads to, to um, all sorts of um, states and um, uh, so forth. So... Um, so the less complex their epistemology, epistemology is a word that means um, um, the study of knowledge. So, um, so epistemology is a knowledge level. And so we could call any of those stages a person's epistemology. That's the level that they're actually living in at the moment. Um, or the, the level of consciousness or the order of consciousness, if you, if you, if you think that the word level or stage is too pathologizing. So, um, so um, the less, um, so, so if somebody is in a, an order of consciousness that is um, um, not so complex, that is, uh, that's um, black and white thinking, for example, there's a, there's a whole, um, um, epistemology or level of consciousness, order of consciousness that um, is is organised around black and white thinking. The more fused with it um, the person is, and so the more stressful and demanding the world appears. And that's was just what I was saying before. Um, so, uh, so the work that we do in EFT actually helps people to um, to um grow into more complex epistemologies and therefore um the world will seem and um will will be negotiated more easily it'll be less stressful it'll be less demanding so some people have said you know the reason i don't like eft is because it doesn't really talk about the complexity of the world and it doesn't talk about you know um, you know how hard it is in the world, and that you know people live in a society, and and you can't um, extract them from that society. That um, helps define them, and so, <clears throat> and where where that that is true, um, I think that um, certainly um, Robert Keegan, who who is a psychologist and a philosopher, 
would say that um, when we're working with um, somebody in a transformational way, then um, we are taking into account the, the stress of the world because what we're doing is we're um, giving them the opportunity to, to, to grow so that, um, so that the world appears less stressful so that they can manage the demands of the world so they can manage the complexities of the world they can manage complexities of relationships they can process their own inner experience and so life doesn't seem to be so um so um demanding and um so complex so the more capacity for internal experience and the expression and transformation of that experience the more the person can appreciate themselves and others and handle the expectations of society. So we need to, um, or, or the EFT work, actually what, what it does, it, it opens the capacity, doesn't it? It, 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 um, it expands the capacity for internal experiencing. Um, so we're talking about what, you know, the core um, thing about um, EFT is its focus on internal experiencing and then expression. So we've got internal experiencing, we've got expression, um, we've got, um, you know, we start with accessing the experience, um, then experiencing the experience, expressing the experience, and then transforming the experience. Um, so we transform the emotional experience by um, um, having people experience another um, antidote emotion. And um, and then make meaning of it. So that's they're they're the, those beautiful steps, and they sound simple when we talk about them. But I think that um, by the end of the graduate diploma, you know, you'll have um, that um, that knowledge <clears throat> that um, that you can actually bring about um, bring about um, or help help people bring about that change within themselves and the change of self, which is um, which is absolutely crucial and increase, you know, includes so much, increasing their own sense of self, increasing their self-concept, their self-esteem, um, their capacity to, to manage complex relationships, um, internal relationships, external relationships, um, gain agency and personal power in their lives, um, uh, have different perspectives um, and, and so forth. So what a beautiful gift that EFT actually is um, and um, um, for, for our clients and, and a lot of people over the years, many, many people have shared with me how um, transformed um, they have been um, and particularly as students also going through the process um, and what a transformational process that is for students as well as for our clients but we have to go through that transformation ourselves uh, in the process of um, of learning EFT. So um, I'm really really excited to um, to be accompanying accompanying you on this uh, on this EFT learning journey. Um, I've accompanied many, many students before, um, probably hundreds of students before um, in Melbourne um, in um, the master's degree. And um, um, I, I'd like to continue that. And I know that um, I need to earn your trust and your respect. Um, but um, I'm really excited about the possibility and the journey and um, and uh, I've certainly, um, you know, making this move from Melbourne to Sydney um, and giving up um, another um, quite large um, uh, job in terms of responsibility to, um, to do this journey with you guys that have already started it. So... Um, I'm really looking forward to, to being with you and to learning with you and sharing with you and um, to developing um, some, you know, significant um, relationships that will, um, that will always be with us. So thank you for listening to this and um, um, you're welcome to uh, contact me um, or call me or um, contact me through the, um, 
the IEFT office and um, and I'll be with you for the rest of your journey um, through your graduate certificate or your graduate diploma. So thank you for listening to me tonight and um, uh, I'll absolutely uh, look forward to seeing you um, in the future. Okay, good night. <laughs>